Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro. It's me, it's Cardi. Welcome. You guys have been in chat for an hour waiting for this episode to start. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys all for being here. Appreciate you all. Let's get the smoke machine on. It is Photo Review Thursday, the day that I look at the work that you submit to me via the Discord. If you'd like to submit your work, you have to become a member. How you become a member is by hitting the join button and hit the photo review level. And I'll review your photos if you submit them through the Discord. We've got lots of photos to review today. La 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 lots. And because we have so many, we got to get right into it. There's no time. There is no time. <laughs> There is no time to waste. Let's get into photo reviews. Last week, I gave you guys an assignment. The assignment was shoot a double page spread. That was the assignment. The whole vibe when it comes to a double page spread is a picture that's spread between two pages. So I'm going to go back and see how far I have to go before who right let's see some double page spread it looks like there's lots and lots and lots of submissions here folks all right let's get to the beginning of the double page spread submissions welcome jen thanks for becoming a member let's go welcome welcome all right so let's look at gaming saves lives Made this photo during a photo walk downtown Saint Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, one of my best strike shots out of streets, out of thousands. Um, blah, 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 E70, blah, blah, blah. shot with a 50. Okay, gaming saves lives. Let's look at your street photography double page spread. Right off the top, you definitely got the formatting. Let me show you what a double page spread would look like. Basically, this is your gutter, meaning the center of the frame drops right there, which is pretty good. I can't I can't complain about your placement. My only my only concern is how central <clears throat> how central we have this information. Oops. Our people right here Oh my goodness, my tool is not changing. There we go. Yeah, just the people right here. It's just a little bit central. And also because of your lens, you're getting a little bit of aberration, a little bit of blur. I'd love to know what lens that you're shooting with. Um, gaming saves lives. I want you to look at here, meaning the aberration that's happening right here on the outer edge of your frame that happens when you're using a dirty lens or a low quality lens so not sure you said that you were shooting with a 50 which is not a low quality lens so just make sure that your lens is super clean around the outside because you can see the sharpness that you're getting here in the center of the image is quite central i mean quite sharp which is good um, I think it's a good, I think it's a good effort. I would have loved to have seen you take a little bit of a step that way. You can, which would make you see the food trucks just a little bit more and would give you the opportunity to see a little bit more what they're looking at and also push them off, oops, push them off of that center axis because this being the gutter you can imagine the gutter drops right in here these people are going to be folding because the gutter is right the gutter is like right there so they're going to be folding in on that gutter these people right here so just be conscious of that gaming saves lives a very very good first effort first submission of the day from gaming saves lives let's go all right, let's see who's next. Next is Chess Optics. Drop in a double page spread. This is definitely a good vibe with the double page spread. Let's see where the gutter drops. You can see the, the gutter drops right here, 
We have a non-distracting background. Check. Let's go. You chose to use on-camera flash, which I'm wondering what's going on with the on-camera flash business. Your on-camera flash is evident by this and here, those catch lights on the eyes and how I see that she's getting hit with flat light. We can make these photos without using flash. It's natural light. Just shoot it in a situation that makes it so you don't have to have this pop-up flash business that happens on cameras. And this is why pro cameras don't have those pop-up flashes is because only amateurs use them. So chess, you can use, you can use a reflector. There's so many ways that you can do this in order to make the exposure pop, um, exposure compensation. Take a picture if this is too dark, um, oops. If this is too dark in front of her face, um, in this area, just do plus with the exposure compensation. Do plus two thirds of a stop and then take the picture. This this is gonna be a bit brighter, but I can see the evidence of the flash um, kicking on the reflection. So again, unless you're gonna get studio lights that you can use outside, which is how you do it. Don't use the pop-up flash. It's lowering, it's lowering the overall quality of your images. No pros use pop-up flash. So Chess, I know you watch all my content. Um, there is a light on Amazon that if you go to my gear list, I will actually show you, oops. I'll show you this light on Amazon Chess. If you go to my gear list, um, what's it called? Newer Vision Pro, I think. Vision 4. This is the light. This is a studio light that you can use outdoors. It runs on a battery. It has a Bowens mount, so you can get soft boxes. You can put it on a stand and it shoots a thousand, full f a f a thousand flashes before you have to recharge the battery, a thousand. That's at full power. And if you switch to a quarter power or half power, you get 2000 or 4000 flashes. And look at the price. The price is 275. That's Canadian. So if you're in the US, this is going to be 229, 250. I have this on my gear list. All you need to do is go here to Steve Cardi slash gear and go down here and use my link right here. Use my link right here. And that will give you, and I'll get a nickel if you decide to buy one. And there it is right there. That's my affiliate link. You can find it on my website. Chess, good effort, good effort, good effort. I still think that you can do this without using um, a pop-up flash. I don't think it's necessary. And I catch everything, everything. <laughs> All right. Angela, AngelaFreeCrop.com. Um, Angela says, I went out to catch a snowfall. Um, my specialty is niche is dogs. I'm a portrait photographer. Um, okay, so um, I'm an old school newspaper girl. And that's at least how I would lay it out. Okay, so this is a photograph from... Angela. Angela, I'm not aligned with your free cropping. This is a, 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 an image size that is not the assignment. The assignment is shoot a double page spread. This is not a double page spread. A double page spread is if this picture is cropped like this. Now this is two pages in a magazine. It's even still, it's 16 by nine, my screen. I want you to look at how everybody else in the folder is submitting full horizontal pictures with no strange proportions. So the assignment, the specifics, shoot a double page spread, not shoot here what you said, which was, um, I shoot newspaper, this is what I'm used to, this is the format that I'm deciding to do. And yes, you did it 4,000 pixels wide. But 
I thought maybe I'd put Bella on the right side in the event magazine wanted to overlay a headline and text on the left facing page. I'm an old school new newspaper girl and this is how I'd lay it out. So um, unfortunately, this is not a magazine spread. So <laughs> again, <laughs> following instructions for a photography assignment is the only thing that you have to do. It's the only thing you have to do. I'm an art director. I'm asking you to shoot a double page spread. My my requirements was that it was 4,000 wide. I didn't think, and I said also, it is the entire frame horizontal with no cropping. The entire frame horizontal with no cropping. The entire frame horizontal with no cropping. Unless you're shooting with a 22 by nine camera, which I don't think that you are, you cropped this photo. So um, I would like you to resubmit this photo, post it in just chatting, and follow the exact requirements because part, like this is such a great photo. You definitely have a vibe with your photo, your light, your post-production. It's very well done. Um, it definitely seems like you're doing a little bit of post around this dog. I'd like to learn a little bit more about your process, but as I promised, I can't do detailed reviews on photos when you don't follow the assignment instructions, Angela. So please double page, double page, double page spreads. All right, let's get into Mike Stimatsi. Mike, this is really, really great. Really great, Mike. Let's go. This is a double page spread. This is a double page spread. And the reason it works so perfectly is because of the gutter. Where you dropped the gutter is exactly, exactly right there. It's perfect. It's perfect. There's room for the article. There's room for a heading up here. This works in a catalog. It works in a magazine. It shows a product and it shows a lifestyle. Let's go. Very well done, Mike. Mike's in my masterclass. This is the first 11 of the day. This is the first 11 out of 10 of the day. Well done, Mike. Thanks for listening, my guy. Well done. Next photo. This is from Tom Fox. First weekly submission. He is a street photographer. Shot with the Nikon Z6 with a 24. Um, let's have a look at Tom Fox photos. This is a great, great, great photo. Really great. Really great. And although you left a note saying, I was really serious to make sure that nothing falls in the center, you absolutely were not doing that because I'm going to draw a line right here. Oops, that's not quite the center. This is the center of the frame. And although no, it doesn't fall right on the center, but the magazine goes like this and it bows in. So you're losing everything here to here because it, it squishes in. So these people, although, and again, this is such a sick photo, but it needs to be pushed over. These people need to be right here. They need to be over like a lot. And because it's so gutter heavy, the only way to save this is to crop it like to crop it, literally take that much off and that much off. And then our gutter falls here where now you've moved it off the center axis. That's the only way to do it is to save is to save <laughs> and it's such a sick photo dude it's such like it's a mind-bending photo it's an 11 but it's not a double page spread it's so 
so goddamn close, but I'm telling you, nothing of importance can be in the center of the frame. And this, although it's not dead center, this is pretty, this is still pretty centered. When you look at it like that, it's pretty centered, Tom. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm talking, this has to be here. Like that's, you have to divide the page in half and then put your subject on half of one side of the page. That's basically how you do it. So I think we missed the boat as far as layout. Photograph though, the photograph's sick. So sick, but so close, dude. So close. Yeah, man, of course, Tom, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. It was close, very close. Let's see. Our next photo. All right. We are looking at John Wallace. Um, all right, John Wallace. This is dope. John Wallace, let's go. This is a dirty, dirty, dirty picture. This guy is just a little bit out of his pose. He's close. But the fact that his hands are not quite ready and his shoulders are a little bit turned in, she's squared up and she's totally ready. He's just twisting just a little bit that way, which for me, it misses the boat. But as far as a double page spread, yes, you absolutely nailed the double page spread because look at the gutter. The gutter drops right there. So... I mean, yes, you could have had them take just a little bit of a step out, which would have worked because you know when the gutter happens, it's gonna make them appear like they're a little bit closer, but still, it's fine. You definitely pass the test on the double page spread. The next thing um, is just the color balance. Um, it's a bit cold. You can see if this is white and this is white, if this is white and this is white, if this is gray and this is white, you can see it feels cold. So shade is cold. So when you're doing your processing, use the eyedropper tool on white balance and touch something that's white, black, or gray, usually white or gray, and neutralize that color balance to snap this up. But this is a banger. We're gonna give you an 11 for this one. Good job, good job. All right. The double page spread, again, this is why I'm giving you assignments like this, because you really have to master how this happens. You have to master framing, master horizontal framing, master vertical framing. Arsonist. All right. Let's see. Arsonist. Double page spread. Very much in the fashion. These. Good movement. Good movement. Good fluidity. The light is actually inspired. I don't mind the shadow here. I don't mind the shadow. I like the direction of the light. I want you to note how high the light is based on his no shadow. The light could go a little bit higher at a little bit more aggressive an angle just to drop this no shadow and to stop this little pocket of light that you're getting there and that little pocket of light that you're getting around his mouth light travels in straight lines so if i draw the light if i draw the no shadow like this i can see exactly where your angle of light's coming from i want that no shadow to go lower so i'm going to want that light angle to come probably at that angle it's going to push the shadow um it's going to push the shadow down a little bit um but again it's the smallest things but only i'm going to notice <laughs> <laughs> Only I'm going to notice this. You see light travels in straight lines. So you see that shadow and you see that shadow. And because of that, it leaves open this pocket right here and this pocket right there. If the light comes at a harder angle down, the shadow from his mouth is going to cover that and the shadow from his nose is going to cover that. And it's going to actually open up more of a pocket of light to catch his face. Um... A little bit too much texture in the skin don't don't do you don't need to add um you don't need to add like what's it called uh clarity or like 
sharpness or texture like it starts getting a little bit too much watch the color balance because again his skin's getting a little bit too red and again make sure when you're doing these that you have a light meter so you can get perfect perfect exposure i really like the gradient that's happening here the gradient that's happening with a lighter source and it gets darker and then you start hitting it with your artificial light it's dope it's good i'm gonna give an 11 and great composition for this one good shit good job all right okay we're starting to flow here let's go hard drive hard drives working in the food niche top down flat lay let's go hard drive well played my friend well played let's go good job good job let's look at this as a double page i couldn't ask for i couldn't ask for closer tolerances really good really good honestly hard drive this is great this is a clean double page let me hide my camera clean double page really really good i want you to watch your overall light exposure um your exposure your exposure here is perfect exposure over here starts to fall off a little bit based on the position of the light i can see where your light is coming in this is getting really nice but also I want you to watch your angle. As you're starting to look at it, you're seeing that the level of this plate feels like as you're looking down, it doesn't feel level. It's starting to feel a little bit like it's actually falling downwards because you're not hitting this directly flat. You're hitting it on an angle. So because of that, it actually means that the top of this spoon is closer than the bottom of the spoon and up here is closer than down here and this bowl is closer than that and the top of this plate is closer than here you can see it looks like it's so when you're mastering the flat lay be completely flat use a tripod use a level and make sure all your lines and all your edges are straight if your lines are converging like this or like this when you're looking down at stuff, um, you're not at the right level. So practice the flat lay. Layout wise, great. Um, this is upside down. This feels like it should be the right way. The pepper is great. This dish is great. This feels a little placed. Um, I mean, I, I, the more you practice this, the more you get good at food styling, but overall you should feel really good about this you should feel really good about this um make sure you're doing your flat lay with a 50 millimeter you can't do a flat lay wide it doesn't work <clears throat> it doesn't work when you do a flat lay with a wide angle lens you need a 50 so you need the space to be able to do this with a 50 or closer if you shoot anything less than 50 your lines start to bend and it becomes really hard to get a perfect flat lay i hope that helps you hard drive good 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 effort good effort from hard drive let's go thanks for submitting oh that was um yeah that was hard drive okay tony tony so this is Tony's contribution to the January travel issue of the very popular Behind the Picture magazine. I love how Tony writes these prelims. It's great. Tony, great double page. Great double page. This says everything. I really love the simplicity. I really, really love the simplicity. I love the fact that you, you, you shot a depth you brought a depth to this picture this is double page you brought a depth you brought lots of room for copy copy over here good spot for heading if we want to do a low heading with copy over top like this is great this is a destination travel photo i want to be there right now you get the 11 my guy this is another 11 Absa, absa, absolutely another 11. Well done. Well done. Banger. Just perfect. Tony, Tony, Tony. Consistency has been great, my friend. Let's see Matthew Sargent. Um, so this is Matthew doing a little shopping. 
with this little dream boat. Great, great, great double page, Matthew. Great double page. Really good. Let's have a look. Let's look at it as the double page is right there. Just a little bit close to the gutter, but I know that you're 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 trying to also include part of this as the frame. For me in this scenario, I would have pushed the cart a little bit further. I would have stood here and I would have used the reflection of these windows to reflect this little one so we have um them doubled. Do you know what I mean? Like I think that that would have been what I did just to make it so this isn't so dominant. And then once you push down, now you're able to use both sides of the frame. Like you can put her on this side of the frame. And I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a little boy or a little girl. I'm sorry. It's so ambidextrous. I don't want to misgender her. <laughs> but yeah, I would use down here as a reflection to be able to like with the same angle. I would have just pushed in just a little bit, just a little bit more. Sorry guys, I didn't start Atom, which means you guys can't control my stream if you've been trying to do that for half an hour. I've forgotten, I apologize, I'm starting it now. Okay, yeah, I think it's really good. I, I mean, this one, it's tricky because you can't really push them over any closer. You can't really push them any closer because of that. I would have just pushed up just a little bit, used the reflection, and then you would have had a little bit more vibe with framing. And the exposure is minus, I would say, a third on the skin. It's got to pop just a little bit more. Skin tone's not popping quite enough, but the idea is there, and you definitely, definitely were very, very close. Good job, Matthew. And I know you were trying to do, you were trying to make it so you had miracles happening here. So you did a great job. The shopping mall, I mean, I mean, uh, grocery store. Yeah, I think if you just pushed in just a little bit, you would have had it. Josh B, trying a little bit of advertising product photography, double page spread. Let's see Josh B, Joss. I like it. I like the light. I like the feeling. It definitely has that luxury kind of a vibe. Let's have a look at where a double page spread would fall. Double page falls right here. I think you did it. I think this is a good one. I think this is a really good one as far as, you know, text here. I mean, I would have liked to see also trying to lay the bottle on this side and have it like like text on this side so basically flip it you know i'm not sure if you shot it both ways like only like this or if you rearranged it to be on the other side and shot some that way the light is great the fact that you're using reflector boards like when you're lighting this <clears throat> you have to use reflectors that are like folded and you put your light here and you shine your light into the reflector and then that kicks back a light that gives you the whole rim down here um you are using boards and down here i mean you're getting close but I want you to really embrace the using of the cards. Do a little, I mean, I'm not a product photographer, but that's how you do it. Um, do some investigating on some product photographers, watch some Scott Cicino videos and see how he gets reflections to go all the way up the bottle. I see it happening down here. You do have a nice reflection here and some nice stuff up here, but it's where it's the most reflective we want to have that highlight stretch right up to the top. Again, this is a niche you're going to lean into. You're already shooting at 80%. You just got to shoot at 
And that comes from knowledge. And knowledge comes from leaning into the techniques that the product shooters that do beverage, specifically glass, do the techniques that they do. This is a great, great, great effort. I'm losing my voice already, I just started. I'm losing my voice already, I'm just starting. Very, very good job, Joss. Well done. All right. All right. Let's see who's next. <gasps> I think I'm gonna sneeze. Treat everybody like a superstar. Famous people less like a superstar. I treat famous That's the wrong people spot. like real people. I played the wrong spot. You see that? Jesus. I played the wrong spot. That's what happens when you do a live show. Sebastian K. I do have to get a drink after this. Um, so I'm gonna have to play a spot. Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian K. This is really, really good. The thing I see, horizon line. We talked about dropping the horizon line lower, which means you crouching down lower and pushing that horizon line just a little bit lower. As far as the double page spread well you nailed it perfectly like you nailed the double page unequivocally like it's perfect perfect the sun obviously you could put this sun um you could put the sun a little bit over drop the sun here drop the horizon line down here this um this grass is not that interesting it's kind of dead so how you make that grass more interesting is you only show like a thin strip of it crouch right down it's going to drop the horizon line it's going to elevate him so he's up against the sky um yeah just try guys when you're shooting pictures like this of people against the sky just use like think lower as far as horizon line think horizon line down here so nothing really the horizon line doesn't go through the product that definitely will help you why did that screen switch that's weird i didn't do that um, yeah, that'll definitely um, make the product stand out more because you can see we have we have a product here that we're selling, which is this jacket. Um, also, a little bit of uh, fix his, oops, fix his uh, little <laughs> thing here, which is flipped. Small things, and also even if you just look at this where I cut the grass out. When I cut the grass out and lower the horizon line, how much that just like gives you that power again, like there's too many elements. Once you, oops, you can see here, um, come on now. You can see here that we have this element down here, the grass, we have this element, the tree line here, and we have this element here, the sky, and also the sun. So. If you remove the amount of elements, take the grass out and you do that by lowering yourself. Now it means that there's less elements and it just makes it so it's um, way more impactful. Ah, I hope that brought you value. Now, watch your favorite commercial. This podcast is brought to you by Cardi Crew Merch. Every piece you see, designed by the photographer you're currently watching. And let me let you in on a little secret. Meticulously hand-stitched by the arthritic grandmothers of our very own viewers. Well, uh, what? This creative community inspired this entire line. Your zeal okay, for artistry, your tireless dedication, and your individuality shines in every stitch and design. Buy some merch. This isn't just another piece of clothing. It's a badge of honor for every creator out there. From what I see here, they are mostly just black t-shirts and hoodies. But you do you boo. You actually want me to read the rest of the script? Oh my god, who is this guy? From the nuanced patterns to the vibrant colors, everything has been designed keeping in mind the creative soul that lies within each one of us. Wow, who wrote that? There isn't a single pattern, not one. Oh my god, leave the There's commentary. There's hardly any nuance. But it says oh here, god, this merch this represents more than just apparel. It's an emblem of our shared passion for creativity. Who wrote this? What absolute twaddle. Wow, this guy is a great supporter. All of this stuff is kind of basic, to be honest. But I'll keep that to myself. Okay. 
Let the world know you're a part of something bigger. A photographer on YouTube's clothing collection that he actually has the balls to make a commercial about. Okay, what Sorry, is going what on? Sorry, what I meant to say is, a collective of photographers that celebrates and uplifts every form of creativity. I am aware, as the narrator, I'm not allowed to insert my own narrative. But, holy moly, this is horrible. Wow. Join the movement, embrace your creative spirit with Cardi Crew merch. And yes, he is really calling this a movement. Be proud of your passion for photography. Be proud of your creative life. If photography is your life, flaunt it. The one paying for this advertisement has asked me to make a toast. Isn't this a podcast? Okay, it'll cost you another 20. Let's raise a toast to every photographer, artist, and creative out there. Thanks for being a part of this journey. This guy's so Did patronizing. That, suit you? that was absolutely ridiculous. Please don't make me read anything like that again. Back to the show. One day I'll have a ginger ale sponsor, but you know, I drink so much of it. Sometimes I have to take a little bit of a break and you know, I play my spots because I don't have any sponsors. I don't really want any sponsors. I don't want to take any sponsors unless it's something that brings you guys real value. So yeah, every once in a while I play one of my own spots and I'm going to have to film another one because I'm getting bored of watching that one and I'm sure you guys are too. All right, let's look at the next submitter. This is Turtle, 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 Turtle. I really like this turtle. I love the fact that you're really getting, you're getting the photography sensibility with your aerial. You always have been. You've had a great sensibility photography wise with your drone photography. This is great. The fact that you chose to drop it along the road is very clever It's very interesting you can see also that this is a very interesting location as far as the way that the roads go and where the way that you could crop this picture another way there really isn't that many other ways my only concern is when we go to the gutter and these silos as it as the page goes in, we're kind of going to lose a little bit of that. And it's going to pinch a little bit in on this building. So my vibe would be to push this important stuff that way. So we can drop our gutter like here. It pushes the most important stuff on that. And then this page just becomes these diagonals. Um, nice leading line. I mean, I think it's great. I do think it's great. I think it's a tricky, tricky photo to compose. Um, but you went out, you made a new photo for me and I like it. I, I really love the tones. I really like the minimal colorless color and I love the sensibility. So again, it's just, I'm willing to bet you have a frame that works perfectly here which is just pushed over just a little bit it's my only critique thank you so much for submitting turtle i appreciate you josh recently revamped my entire discord server let's go kyle g winter arrived so slow shutter speed landscape photography shot on the sony a7 IV. kyle g winter is upon us let's go kyle g i really like what you're doing here i really like what you're doing here i think that this first i think that this front rock i'm going to show you compositionally what i would have done differently this is your gutter so this is the center of the page you can see now how this dominant rock is coming right in on the edge. And after a while, this becomes not quite as interesting as this is. So for me in this scenario, I would have rotated myself that way. It's moved this way a little bit and tried to hit it in this way. So I'm not getting hit with this dominant rock first. And also, so I could move this edge here off the gutter. Because right now, it's so, so close to the gutter. It's like right there. So that's the two things that I would do right now. The waterfall is so well executed. And it's such a beautiful aspect of this picture. I want more 
of the waterfall and less of the rock if that makes any sense this is a wicked wicked picture i like it i like it and again it's it's so close it's so 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 close there's no cropping when it comes to shooting um there's no cropping when you shoot horizontal but imagine if in a perfect world this is what it would be for me i'm trying to crop this without doing anything too radical i would push it over just i i can't i can't do it without cropping this picture too much but i want more i want it to be biased more like that so it's more waterfall and less rock so it feels more balanced right now because it's equal rock and waterfall and this wall of rocks that you have back here as well that rock plus this rock starts for me to be like not enough of this quadrant down here which is so much of your photography so kyle great job so 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 close so close um just a little bit a little bit that way all right anna anna so anna said she had an unexpected session with principal dancers from the national opera theater valley of ukraine amazing here's my magazine submission wow anna well executed well executed i like the movement i can see just a touch of the edge of your frame here just a touch of the edge of your frame here let's look at this as a double page spread yeah it's good you framed this well you framed this well i want you to remember when you're doing these kinds of things you're lighting the wall which is what you did you lit the wall but i feel like she's almost a little bit too far back into the light just based on these highlights based on these highlights they're almost blowing out just a bit looking at how bright the highlight is here and here versus here this is plus two thirds of a stop almost at points plus one stop so it means when you're doing a white setup and this is the background and this is your model and you have a light here aiming this way at the center point and you have a light here aiming back at the center point unless you're using blockers to block those lights they're going to create they're going to create fall off and that fall off you actually have to take your subject and keep moving them forward until the fall off isn't touching the nose like when they're back the highlight will actually be touching their nose on both sides so you back you pull them out of the light until the highlight is just back here but not touching the nose and then that's the spot that once you find that spot then you put a piece of tape and that's their marker so for for me for this they're too far back into the light it's a small thing but that and because of that you're getting this variation of too many too much difference in stops like if this is normal or we'll call this here normal right here this is um plus two thirds or almost um four fifths of a stop <laughs> or eight tenths of a stop um yeah i i deal with tenths of a stop because my light meter goes in tenths i hope that helps you anna compositionally you nailed it compositionally you definitely know how to shoot a double page spread it's definitely beautiful but also watch here you can see how the white it didn't quite get white it, it's really white up here not white down here so it's very white in this whole area here but it falls off around the corner and that has to do with placement where your subject it has to do with angle if this angle is off just a bit or this angle is off just a bit the idea is you find your center point you make sure that this light is four feet you make sure that this light is four feet and then you make sure that they're the same height and then this light you aim here 
so they cross this light you aim here and then this light you aim here and then you take a light meter reading here 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 and you make sure that it's within a tenth of a stop all the way across the back and then that's how when you shoot perfect whites um when you shoot perfect whites they look like this and that's the difference you notice there's no you don't see the edge of my frame right you see here oops sorry i deleted your photo didn't delete it but um you don't see the edge of the frame at all it's like a perfect perfect white that that is where we're trying to get you is like you're not seeing anything except for perfect perfect white that's where we're trying to get you and you're close you're getting close but you can see now when you when you really when you really look at it you, oops you see what i mean you see it here and you see it here and you see it here the edge of the frame versus this perfect white small things small things you're getting there you're getting there Anna. keep shooting keep shooting good job that was anna 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 let's go well done anna all right let's see our next submitter g is him i present you with trucker magazine's photo of the week shot on the 1dx g is him this is a double page spread g is him well done let's go very well done very well done let me show you where the double page is it is right there i couldn't ask for better placement honestly i couldn't ask for a better placement small thing is um color temperature is a bit cold it's a bit cold because the light is low and shade is cold so just color balance so the shade because you can see here if this is pure white look at how this is cold this is pure white look at how this is cold if this is supposed to be a black or gray look how this is cold so just color balance something that is white or gray to make the shot a little bit warmer especially when you're shooting in shade but composition you did this this is perfect 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 and he's likable there's room for copy we can put some copy up here we can put some copy over top of the truck you know what i mean like it's good and the light that's on his face and the exposure is absolutely perfect you should be thrilled this is a really good job that was g is him great job all right who's next who else wants me to look at photos i'm sure there's lots of people let me quit that all right who's next we have durell durell all right nice double page let's go really nice double page i mean for me this is literally two photos you could cut this photo directly in half it's almost like it's almost like everything that's happening on the other side of the brown isn't even real like what is this there's a car here um this car we could definitely be losing um i would cut the building right here so we're not seeing um that extra little bit of white would cut the building like right there but this is great the light that's on your wife's face is great the exposure here perfect perfect exposure the fact that she's wearing the raincoat the way that she's holding this the fact that this is not growing out of her head this is all great all great this is honestly this the only thing that i wish is that the car wasn't there and that you were punched in just a touch more um i'm not gonna hate on it um i think this is a great 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 effort i'm gonna give you a 10 
11. I said, <laughs> I'm going to give you an 11. <laughs> Durell, well played. Well played. Good job. Good job. Durell in my mentorship program as well as in my masterclass. Maria, edited version of my previous post because it was too dark. All right. Maria lives in Mexico. Shot with the Sony RX100. Let's go, Maria, with the double page spread. Maria. Let's go, Maria. This is absolutely a double page spread. Let's look at where the gutter would drop. Oops, that's not it. The gutter would drop right here. So that's two pages. <clears throat> this is just a little distracting for me here. Um, but what she's doing, the people behind her, again, I wouldn't mind you moving this way just a little bit and shooting that way at them, which is going to give you separation and separate these people from being right behind her. I like the leading line, though. You know, I do like the fact that you are moving through the photo. You're moving through the logs. You're moving from this one to the other. Like it does have like a nice leading line through the photo. This works for me, Maria. It does. I again, it's it does feel like I want you to step over one, but exposure, the vibe, the the overcast light, you're a very very natural. You're a natural photographer, Maria. Natural. You do this so well what i want you to be thinking about when you're shooting is shooting through the picture i shoot a hundred frames for one frame i shoot a hundred frames for one frame so you can't get it in one frame you can't get it in one picture you have to shoot 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 check step over check check look this way click 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 like you really have to shoot through the picture in order to like the picture reveals itself once you shoot through it. The photo that you'll get on photo 87 versus photo one, you'll be on another planet. If you keep shooting, every idea you have, shoot through the picture. That's my idea. Let's go, storm coming. Joining the Cardi New Crew member. photo reviews. Welcome, thanks for joining us, my guy. Let's give you a little bit of smoke because I like to fill my room with clouds of smoke whenever someone becomes a member. Thank you for becoming a member and joining the photo reviews. All right, who's next? That was Maria. Congratulations, Maria. Again, I have high hopes for you. I had a really good time talking with you recently. This is Donna. Donna using still life from items she already has. Shot with the Rebel 50 millimeter. All right, she also used a tripod, um, black material for the background. The black material that you're using is not the right black material, unfortunately. This is Donna. What Donna has understood now is how to lower yourself so you're featuring the product on top of the table. Although you're still hitting it you're still skimming the background, meaning I can see the angle of the table. It means that you're not hitting, like you're still stepped over. Like you need to step over. Like I can see where you're standing based on what this looks like. You need to move over this way. Just move over and then re-rotate this, turn it, because it's like the table should look like, like it, the table should be square. Like it should look like that, but it's not. It looks like, it looks like this because you're hitting it from a weird angle. And then this line over here is crooked because you're not hitting it at a right angle. So the line is down, is like that. See what I'm saying? Um, down here, the lines are very crooked. So you either have to rotate the thing rotate the table so it's square up to you you have to check not just the line like i can see that you're watching this line i can see that you're watching this line to make sure that that's straight but you're not watching this line to make sure that that's straight and your background material velveteen is what you get velveteen if this is velveteen it is the lowest quality velveteen money can buy which 
cheap velveteen when you pull it 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 will never go flat expensive velveteen when you pull it it is a complete jet background with you don't have to do any burning and dodging or darkening or anything like that a completely jet background should look like this this background he, he's right up against it he, this is what an expensive piece of velveteen looks like and you also Question. you 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 have to pull it taut also you can't just throw it and leave it like wrinkled like that because any place especially with that low quality velveteen that you have just go to a fabric store ask for high quality velveteen you, when when he takes it off the roll it's completely flat it's completely flat that's what you use this is not the piece of velveteen yet you are close and again donna each time you do this you're leveling up a little bit more a little bit more lighting wise i still need your lighting to feel a little bit more inspired your lighting is proportionately better than the last time but we now have to master the background because you can see everything that you see we see if you see it we see it we see all of this this is supposed to be clean perfect black so if it's not doing it it's the wrong piece of fabric so close closer you've taken all the input that i gave you last time and fixed it but still there's more things that you're being sloppy on so i want you to go even further and fix those things <laughs> okay we're getting close that was donna we're getting closer donna keep staying in there keep staying in there when it clicks you are going to be so happy Okay, so this is Black Phoenix saying I'm failing forward, trying to maintain consistency, trying to submit every week. Nikon Z62. This is her double page spread. This is Black Phoenix. Thank you for submitting Black Phoenix. You definitely nailed the double page. Um, you definitely nailed the double page. There's a couple of mistakes that you made that I want to show you. Number one, um, right off the top of my the bat is I'm really wanting to know what you're doing with post production. Um, again, the lines are relatively straight. You have good straight lines here and good straight lines here. Good straight line here. He's a bit close to the edge here for me, like very close to the edge and very close to the edge here. You have to watch that because when it goes to print, that's going to get cut. And it is a bit busy. Like it, it becomes really hard to put text over top of this because there's so there's so many colors and it's not like out of focus. Um, and then the other thing is what's happening with your images? I'm trying to figure out what you're doing to make your images so not sharp because this is at a hundred percent and at a hundred percent your picture should look like this right and your photos are looking like this so there's you have an incredibly expensive nikon and i'm trying to figure out why your images aren't sharp um and again i i it's either what you're doing in post-production which is like, it's probably what you're doing in post-production. I need to work with you step-by-step step to find out what the mistake is that you're making. Um, very close, Black Phoenix. Keep shooting and don't stop submitting every week. <laughs> like, honestly, don't stop. But I want to find this problem. Somebody had a question. Um, someone said, question, and then I heard it. And then now I don't see... Um, yeah, bro, I'm going to help you figure it out. What was the question that I missed, guys? I heard a, I heard a command Q, but then I didn't see the question. Do you want to ask your question again? Um, I missed it. Okay, let's look at our next shooter. Um, Velveteen. Dreadfully blessed. Um... Canon Mark M uh, Mark uh, can't speak 
Canon 5D Mark II. Jesus. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. This is, and again, back button focus. Welcome, Teak Neek, back for two months. Thanks, buddy. Let's go. Devlin for three months. This is Dreadfully Blessed's double page spread. Let's go, Dreadfully. Really, really beautiful lines on this car. Beautiful lines on this car. This is perfect. Perfect. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for a, a sexier double page spread. Honestly, it's very, very well done. I want you to watch your exposure because, you know, we're going to go in deep on all of these shots. And I want to make sure that we have nice, tight focus and good detail. Uh, again, it, the more, the closer you go in on these cars, my brother starts to be like, my brother paints these supercars and stuff. And he'll look at the paint and he'd be like, this is garbage paint. <laughs> <laughs> so, other than the fact that the paintwork isn't that great on this car, the photography is really well done. It's really well done. It looks in here like it's grain, but it's not grain. It's um it's like the fleck in the paint. So, I definitely I definitely see that. This is really good. You should be really proud. It's another 11 for me. Really well done. Just watch a couple of things. Watch up here in the in the um the grates that you're not um you're not like cutting that or making it um not as noticeable as it could be small things small things just watch where you're cutting up here you know because this is such a feature i wouldn't mind seeing like this a little bit looser because down here these lines quite aren't quite as interesting as this upper part up here so just small things just what you're shooting and featuring you shoot this stuff really well. I just want to help you become a quarter of a million dollar a year car photographer dreadfully. <laughs> Let's go. Well done. All right. That's dreadfully blessed. Well done. These are never going to stop, by the way. They just keep coming. Zeal. Thomas W. Shot with the Nikon Z7 with a 24 to 70 at 36 millimeters. This is Zeal. Zeal, this is good. Good, 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 good. I really like this. Really like this. A couple, my, my, first off, my only critique is like, it's just a little claustrophobically close to the edge of the frame. You're gonna lose this once we go to print. Once we go to print, it's gonna cut there. You lose like a quarter inch all the way around your images. So that's my only worry is that things like this are too close and things like this are just a touch close looking at this as a double page spread this is where your gutter falls which it's like again composed perfectly we got lots of room for text the textured background the background is so great the window doesn't distract me it actually adds to the element and the mood that you manage to have happening with this subject here this vibe on her face the nice little punch of hair it's a little bit of her hand all of this just makes this like really 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 special really special we're giving you an 11 for this one this is an amazing that's an 11 out of 10 by the way um very good very very good this is my brother leslie les says this is my double page submission um so this is a self-portrait shot in the studio last week he shot over 100 frames came up with this one picture shot with a canon t2i um with the 50 with the um 24 millimeter all right leslie with the double page spread painting a picture of my mom with the rest of his artwork les this is dope this is dope you definitely nailed the composition of the double page spread you definitely nailed the composition of the double page spread um so good i mean again it's the on-camera flash that i have the problem with the on-camera flash is giving us 
weird double shadows back here on the dream catcher it's get, it's making you look a little flat like it, it's not molding the way that we like and overall it's only lighting like this part of the picture where it falls off back here it falls off in the corner falls off down here and it falls off down here so the idea is there the hard thing when you're shooting wide angle is the way that the lines are straight here and the lines are straight here but the lines aren't straight up here and along the wall they are here but then is as, as it goes down these lines become they start to converge so it's tricky when you're shooting wide angle and you don't have the room to not shoot wide angle so for me in this case trying i think that you're trying to include too many things i think trying to include this piece and this piece i would just make this shot much tighter you know what i mean and just punch and and less uh and not go any higher than the top of the paintings you know but still again um you're going to be hanging out with durell um durell lives in vancouver he's going to drive up with you he said in a month and have him spend some time shooting with us some of this stuff it's going to be super dope again the on-camera flash like it just makes that that lighting like umph like not really great i gotta get you another body my big bro i'm gonna get you a body i think that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna like ship you a body because i think it's gonna change your reality as far as capturing your work and also the photography that you do big brother less thank you for submitting this painting he's working on of my mom right now insane and also he did this when we lived together at two wide studios back in the early 90s and he painted this one when he was 16. He painted this picture when I was eight years old. And this picture right here was my first artistic inspiration. This, like my older brother did this, which was magic for me. And because of my older brother, this is why I'm a photographer. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't do what he did. Thanks for submitting Les, I appreciate you. All right, who's next? Who's next, who's next? This is calligraphy, double page spread. Calligraphy, let's go, calligraphy. I like the lines, I like the lines. I like the color, the fact that you've eliminated a lot of the color here and it's just kept it to like yellow and gray. It's a good double page spread. It's a good double page spread. I think for you, there's something that's happening in the post-production that I want I want to be working through with you. Not sure what you're doing in post, but I'm feeling like once I come in here and I see skin, I'm seeing blur that's happening down here. I'm seeing over texture that's happening on the nose. You know what I mean? In here, super texture, then this whole area here blurred around the neck. We talked about your retouching. We talked about your retouching. I can see that you're doing some stuff down here. I can also see this edge here that looks very bad. So these small things when it comes to like, your pictures can't fall apart once you go this close. They're not allowed to fall apart. I'm seeing literally healing brush mistakes and lots of blur tool. The blur tool isn't used anymore. And I'm also seeing over sharpening because this is looking like gator skin because you're over sharpening and the goosebumps because you're over sharpening are accentuated. So these are things that I want to work on. So it's your post-production. I think once we start to get your post-production into a place where it's like dope, your photography is gonna explode because what you're doing in post right now like i can see it on the skin everywhere everywhere where you're putting uh what looks like your mouse because it's definitely not a tablet anywhere you're putting your mouse over skin i'm really noticing so that is something that i need you to be working on let's work on your post production because you have the composition you have the ideas Let's work on the post-production and your photography is going to get like, 
That was calligraphy. All right, Mr. Gunnerson. This is the product shot with the R5 with the 50 millimeter 1.8. This guy's got an R5. Now I just got to teach you how to light, Mr. Gunnerson. Scott Gunnerson is needs to learn how to light because there's only one sun. And because there's only one sun, you should only be using one light. And I can see that you're not using one light because I can see a shadow going that way and a shadow going that way. And also I'm seeing these hot spots that are on your products. Overall, is this a double page spread? Sure, it's a double page spread. You could put this between two pages because it goes right here. But when we're looking at lighting, when we're thinking about lighting, we have to be really overextending ourselves and looking at the absolute best, best in show. So you go on Behance and let me just log in here. You go on Behance, of course, and then you search product photography and you look at what is happening in the realm of product photography and you can see lighting and you can see how how far these photographers are pushing light there's only one light from the front this is also even showing you the sketches that the art director drew look here for product photography and light an idea look at this for product photography and light i know that you're new scott and an older gent but i want you even flat lay even flat lay can be done oops this isn't the right story can be done incredibly interesting i want you to look at behance and look at the light Look at how far these photographers are pushing light. Look at the ideas. Look at the sets. Oh, this is a little still a glitch. So once you find some some product photographers, when you start to look at light, right? And when you start to look like you really have to dive in, like you really have to dive in. And when you look at what, what you're offering, you have to know the only difference between you being able to do this is skills. Because you understand the camera, it's just skills. And in fact, you have the same camera as I do. So what I need you to do is lean in on the tutorials, lean in on how can I make my work look like this? lean in on the tutorials lean in on how photographers that shoot in the studio light because only when you do that will you will you actually see that you don't light with two lights like this at a product so there's a shadow that goes that way and a shadow that goes that way because it's unnatural for the eye there's only one sun so you have to light, light with one main light and accent reflectors usually it's the light we use one light and bounce it around people are using mirrors people are lighting top down there's using misters there's so many things that if you want to dive into product photography just watch some tutorials watch scott Ciccino shoot food and beverage there's so many product photographers that do amazing quick 10 minute tutorials on how to get like a, a little tray from the dollar store, fill it with water, do top down how to light it and how to do like cool product shots of a perfume bottle floating in water. You can do it with stuff from the dollar store, literally. Just, um, yeah, watch some tutorials. Honestly, Scott, like you have such talent and you're going now into a new area. You bought the gear. Now learn, watch the instructions that's going to get you to be able to use the gear at the level that you need to. I hope that's inspiring. That is a photo from our man, Scott Gunnerson.
You have an R5. I can't wait to see what you're going to do with this thing. All right, Scott. Let's see who's next. On Yana. On Yana. Shot with the Nikon D7500. Double page spread from On Yana. On Yana. Um, I want you to look at where the gutter is, On Yana. I want you to now take your photo and divide it in half. And where the halfway mark is, is right there. Did you succeed in shooting a double page spread? Or will this poor lady's face be squished in the gutter? Because the pages go like this. She's too close. She's too close. She's too close. She's too close to the gutter. You have a lot of wasted space back here, back here, back here. And also her pose leaning like that makes her look wide that way. I'm not sure why the leaning. The leaning is never, when you have somebody who is thick, it's never flattering to shoot them sitting or leaning like that because it just makes them look dumpy. You know what I mean? And it makes this belly fall over because she's leaning forward. The background, color-wise, yes, but text-wise, like seeing this Duncan Street and seeing residences, now it makes me think that you just put her in front of hoarding and took a picture. So I want you to dive deeper into body language, number one, because the body language is not flattering for this lady, and number two, cut your picture in half. You can put a grid in your picture, and when you look through the frame, make sure that there's nothing important on the center. And if her face is here, and the center's here, I would say that her face is too close to the center. So this one for me, Anyana, is a bit of a fail, um, and the background is not quite inspired, and the body language. I know you, 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 you need to find more friends to shoot. I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody, it's just when you're shooting the same person over and over and over again, as a photographer, you're not growing because you're not learning how to direct different people. You're not learning how to light different people, how to work with different people. You will never be hired to shoot this person. So get used to shooting strangers, get used to shooting new faces, and those new faces make up your portfolio. Every time you shoot the same person again and again and again, you can't show those photos. Shoot new people, and each time you hit it, that becomes a portfolio photo. So if you're just like, you're kind of throwing them out there with the same person, and it's just, if you actually do nail a photo with her, then it's like one of 12 photos in your portfolio that's the same person, you know what I mean? Um, all right, I hope that helps you on Yana. Let's look at somebody else. Slippy Hollow. Um, so this is another one shot on a Sony. This is Slippy Hollow's double page spread. Okay, Slippy. All right, Slim. So this is your double page. Like I definitely see where the double page falls for sure. Is it the most interesting shot in the park? Not necessarily. Does it fit into the, comp the composition of a double page spread? Sure, but beyond that, if it wasn't the assignment of the double page spread, is this going in your portfolio? They seem very much like they're just waiting. She's waiting for you to take a picture. She's waiting for you to take a picture. So it, it's like to me, and then this glass entrance way just makes it feel a little snapshot. The light on the face is fine. The light's fine, but the exposure's wrong. This is under two thirds of a stop, maybe half a stop. And this is under half a stop. So exposure as well um, is low. And again, it's just overall interest based on the photographs that I've seen you make, based on the photos of the week, based on your studio work, based on all of that stuff. You're kind of mailing it in here for me. You're kind of mailing it in because I'm not putting this in the magazine, not because it doesn't fit the format. It's just boring. 
You know what I mean? There's nothing to it other than it fits the format. So lean in harder, Slippy Hollow. I appreciate you. <laughs> lean in harder. All right, let's see our next. Let's see our next. Um, 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 um. Robin. Robin. All right, Robin. This is a crazy photo. Let's go. I'm glad you're submitting, Robin. And thank you for talking to me yesterday. Let's look at where the gutter falls. The gutter falls right on the plane. So the gutter is going to drop right there. But I like what you're doing. I like that you have this little motion here and this little motion here. Light wise is where we're losing it. Light. But the idea and the double page spread is there. So I'm going to give you an applause for that. A couple things we're losing. Color balance. There's an overall green cast that's happening in the background all back through here and on the plane based on the color temperature of the lights the lighting i can see that the it looks like the lighting is going up based on where this shadow is on his face she's lit okay but the lighting that's happening on his face is weird and then over here her eyelashes and whatever is happening, again, this is why I tell people not to wear fake eyelashes because they're ridiculous and they do the worst things for light. These shadows and then this shadow. Like this means double light because you have shadow going that way, which is doing this. And then you have a shadow going that way, which is doing that. I have double shadow here and I have shadow over here. What does that mean? Two front lights. That means two front lights that are placed in the wrong spot two front lights that are fighting against each other so how we light is by trying to not fight against the shadows in this case you light using a, a, a softbox that has the potential of like being smaller so it punches smaller bits of light just on that person you see i use i have grids i don't know if my rear light uh, my back camera is not on I have grids that I put on my soft boxes. I have grids on these soft boxes. So, yeah, there's a very bad shot of it, but you can see it right there. And that makes it so the light's focused. It doesn't like let the light spill. And therefore, it would correct the double shadows. Because of the shot that you're making here, you're trying, you're making two photos. This is a photo, and this is a photo. So because of that, the light can't, the, the, the two light scenarios can't be fighting each other. Um, again, this is a very, this is a very good attempt on a very, it's a very difficult photo, Robin small things you cutting the feet off you're cutting his feet you're cutting her feet and you have tons of headspace and room on the um whatever that part of the plane is called you got all kinds of ring the rudder or whatever the hell that thing is um so you have all kinds of room to like lift the camera up so you're not cutting people's feet unless you're hiding stuff that's happening on the floor but even still don't be so close with the feet and the cast. This again, Robin, it's good. I want you to keep submitting. I want you to keep submitting and I want to see more photos, not photos that you shot before that hopefully they're working or you're trying to make work. Um, I hope this helps you and brings you some value, Robin. Keep submitting. Now that you've pulled the band-aid off, keep it coming. <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> All right, that's Robin. Let's look at Miss Jennifer. This is um, Phil the Tech Guy shot as her double page spread. All right, let me see the name again. This is Miss Jennifer. All right, Miss Jennifer, thank you for submitting. Phil the Tech Guy. Now, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what the first thing I'm gonna do is, is to take a line and draw it through the center of your photo. 
would you say that you qualified this one as a double page spread jennifer or do you think that you put him too close to the center of the frame and in fact are too close on him in general when you're shooting double page spreads and you're trying to tell a little bit more of a story it's hard to be so punched in and also like putting his whole head this width between like this this it's barely gonna work putting his head profile like he's so big and you're so close how are you gonna fit that head on one half of the page so for me this one misses i can see the top light what's happening here with his bald head is the light up here is like plus one and the light here is like normal so the top light in this room is making it so up here is getting quite bright again it's tricky it's tricky i feel for me you needed to back up like three feet back up three feet and have him like the back of his head here but the front of his head not go any further than there and then now when the gutter drops down the center now his head is centered in between here and here on one half of the page and you have the laptop on the other side so it's a small thing but when you guys are all submitting these photos, you can go in Photoshop. It's super easy. Open Photoshop. And um, I mean, do I want to open Photoshop right now? Yeah, why not? I'll just show you how to do it. It's super easy. Um, okay, we're just opening Photoshop. So what I want you to do is open Photoshop and then apparently I have to verify Photoshop right now for some reason. Let me just look at another photo in the meantime. Um, we'll look at a photo from Romeo in the meantime. But I am going to come back to you, Miss Jennifer. Um, yes, Miss Jennifer, I think that you're you're you just need a little bit. You just need to back up a bit. You're just too 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 close. But I'm going to show you how to. Um, Photoshop is now feeling like hanging out with us. Yeah, Photoshop lags a little bit when I'm um, opening a Mac. So this is what you do. You open Photoshop, make a new file. Oops, you just do new file. No, I'm, I'm in Photoshop here, dude. New, this, over here. And make it um, inches. And we'll do 12 inches by eight inches, which is a horizontal frame. Yes or yes. So that is 12 by eight. Then Command R turns on the rulers and then just draw a ruler and it's gonna snap to the center. So that's the center. And then do one of these and that's gonna snap to center. And you can literally, you can draw a line, you can use Photoshop, you can use the line tool, whatever you want, but Basically, imagine you have to draw these grid lines over top of your photo. So you can actually see, um, let me just make this uh, black so it's not, or make it white, I guess. Oh, gray, Jesus. Sorry guys, this is, um, make it black. So you can see, you just make the grid lines over top, so now, you can see when you're looking at a photo, if it actually falls in and works. And if I take this photo now and just um, drag this into Photoshop. Um, here, let me save it first. There it is. And now I take this picture and just drag it onto here. You can see um, let me just transform it. You can see exactly where, like this is your whole picture. This is an eight by 12. That's the whole frame. So just do that. Just drop it on a grid. See where the center mark is. Even before you submit to me, you can do this on your own. You can drop the center line and see if it fits on the gutter. You know what I mean? So it's simple, Jennifer, you're close. You're so, 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 so close, but um, 
not quite there just because of where your center point is all right let's look at our next photographer i'm pushing my machine now that i opened photoshop hopefully um it's uh it said it was chopping up the stream hopefully we're back yeah that little um <laughs> that little uh restart kind of uh a reboot on photoshop might have made me lag a little bit i'm gonna get a new machine still i'm waiting for the i'm waiting for the either m3 mac studio or the m3 mac mini the m3 max pro yeah i'm waiting for the m3 processor <laughs> is basically it okay let's go romeo Romeo with the double page spread. Romeo, let's look at where the gutter falls for young Romeo. This is the center. For me, she's almost pushed over too far in this kind of instance, Romeo. Like, I feel like she's too close to the edge here you know, and too small in the frame, you definitely have a great shot here and there's a great texture. I feel like I could see almost a little bit more of her. You could definitely punch in on her. Um, but the problem is because you're hugging the edge of the frame so much, you're also not doing that thing where you draw the line down the center and you see where the center point is, and then you put your subject here. You center your subject on one half of one page. So for me, everything else, the rest of the shot is great. It's, she's just sitting on the wrong rock. She should be sitting on this rock if you don't want to move or you have to recompose your shot because she's too small and too far back in the frame. I hope that helps you, Romeo. And I'm glad that you're shooting new faces. You need to shoot new faces. I'm glad that you're shooting new faces because it's necessary. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right, that was Romeo. This is Tyler Trace. This is his editorial double page spread submission. Tyler Trace. Let's look at Tyler's photo. Thanks for submitting, Tyler. Tyler, this one is a bit close to the line for me. It is on the line. Again, you dropped him on the third, but that is not what we're doing when we're shooting double page spreads. You have to cut your picture in half. You put him on the third axis, meaning you put the grid on and we have a third and we have a third and you dropped him right there on the third. But that's not what we're trying to do because now you can see that he's claustrophobically close to the gutter and there's a huge amount of space between him and that other shot you have to imagine this is one page and this is two page so you can't you can't have him on this page without centering his head here if you center his head here and then there's a bit of shoulder that goes here that's okay but for me, Tyler, he's it's it's incredibly offset. And when you look at it, you're like, wow, that actually really is offset. And how he needs to be is like here. Like that is the composition. And when you look at now the double page spread and look at that as the gutter and look at the spacing of his head here and his head here, that's how you do it. That's how it has to be. So for me, we missed the boat on this one because you got mystified by the, th the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds doesn't apply when you're shooting a double page spread. I hope that helps, Tyler. All right. Let's look at our next photograph. This is from Dan. Um, this is a double page spread. He shot last summer dan all right dan let's have a look at this big okay this is definitely definitely falling into the vibe of the double page spread let's look at where the gutter falls gutter falls there um a little bit of the tr we're cutting quite a bit of the bottom of this um thing here 
it's hard when you have other people organizing these things because you feel as though you can't pose her. This pose for me, I'm not loving. And also you're very much aiming down on her instead of aiming at her. So we can see a little bit more like just to lower the horizon. So this rock line isn't going right through her body. For me, that's like, yes, it does provide a little bit of leading line through the frame, but the way that her hands are, again, these sorts of like when other photographers set up these photo shoots and it's basically just 20 photographers aiming at one person, doing whatever they feel like doing, it's always a shit show. I would, I never, do my workshops like that every photographer has their own time with the subject to direct them with coat with me coaching them um also i think that i'm not sure if it's the suit or the post-production or the makeup like i i can't i can't like reconcile what's happening with this suit if this is just really bad makeup which it really looks like just horrible makeup like look at look at the details when you're shooting with a high megapixel camera that just looks this just looks tacky so i don't know for me i i definitely understand like you're trying and you set up someone blah 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 and the body painting and a blah blah but it's just it's so off trend it's so off trend it's like something that was cool 20 years ago so because of that like building a whole workshop around it and then you going and paying and be it's just for me, it's kind of shitty because you can't show this in your portfolio. You can't show this in your portfolio. So then what's the point in doing it? So I would like to see a little bit more photography that's outside of this realm where you have no control of the location and no control of what the subject's doing. You're essentially just shooting a hockey game. She's the, the hockey game's the model and you're just aiming at your camera at her and 30 people are shooting. So I'd like to see you get into like making pictures instead of taking pictures making pictures is idea execution taking pictures is something is happening i saw it i was there click 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 it's what everybody does so i want to see you push in yes the composition feels sure it's definitely a double page spread but um for me that's where that's where it stops everything else is just like I don't want to look at this picture anymore. And you don't want to have your viewers feeling like they don't want to look at the photos anymore. Blue skin is never flattering in any case, especially with white people. So just the whole concept of makeup, the, the, yeah, it's just, it's bad. So although it fits, um, not thrilled. <laughs> Dan, thank you for submitting my guy. All right, so again, it's, um, yeah, I would love to see other, other things. And again, I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to make fun or anything like that. It's just, you. Un I think you understand what I mean. Like a photographer sets up this thing, you're a photographer who knows, net, lo knows less than the photographer who sets up that thing. You trust the thing that he sets up is cool. But hindsight's 2020. The fact that he's setting this up in 2023 Whew. I promise you my workshops will be cooler. All right, let's get into Photography Ruined My Life. This is trying my first submission. Um, this is mental. Photography Ruined My Life. This is crazy. Very, very, very good. It's close. I mean, it's not perfect. You're making a couple of simple mistakes here, but very good. As far as double page spread, this is where your double page spread goes. So yes, double page spread. As far as tightness, way too close on the fingers, way too close on the toes. Like it, it's almost like just bor bordering on like not enough space. When you go to print, you lose. You lose a quarter of an inch around the whole photo, which is an eighth of an inch all the way around, which means that finger is claustrophobically close to being cut off. Now, what's working? Tonally, brown, 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 beautiful. White socks, white background, beautiful. Little bit of a hint of a background stand, I don't mind that, but imagine if that was cropped out 
Now we're even more zoomed in on just her. The role, sure. The role, I don't mind that at all. But the role is crooked. And if you draw this line from here over to here, you'll see that actually the picture isn't level. The picture is this way. So that small thing, it's like, I don't know if the picture's crooked or if the roll is going out crooked, meaning this much of the roll, the roll seems tighter here, roll seems tighter here and looser over here. It looks like it's pinched here and not pinched here. So these kinds of small things, meaning I don't see it, I see, I don't see a stand over here, but I do see a stand over here. So those kinds of balance things. Now, when you're getting to this elite level of photography, you didn't hear me talk about the light because the light's perfect. You didn't hear me talk about the styling. Styling's perfect. You didn't hear me talk about the girl. The girl's perfect. Didn't hear me talk about the pose because the pose is perfect. Perfect. The light post-production, all of like all of that stuff, is, but it's just small things with the framing and small things this way. I'd love to see more from this shoot, but this is fire. You're a good photographer. You can shoot and you're already on your way. Join my masterclass, my guy. Join my masterclass. This is great. This is great. This is the kind of photo that um, like upsets people because it's so banging. This is very, very, very good. I'm giving you an 11 for this one. Congratulations. All right. Well done. Thank you. Photography ruined my life for submitting. This is Mr. Nelson. This is your submission. All right, Mr. Nelson. Let's have a look at this. Thank you for submitting. Mr. Nelson, you are dealing with light and you're dealing with light with a little bit of a lack of understanding of light. Whatever source you're using is not a great source and it's not large enough because we're not really getting enough. I would love to see a lighting diagram on this. I can also see that you're doing some darkening back here on this side of the frame. I don't know what's happening over there. When you light this, you build a three-dimensional reflector like this that basically stands up and then you have your light stand here and you light into that and the light aims back out and therefore you can get a nice rim of highlight alongside the glass. What we are getting is big hot spots on the glass and these hot spots on the glass come from when you're not sure how to light glass. And in fact, lighting glass is one of the hardest things to light because of those reasons. So you're trying to do something that's super advanced without watching the videos to learn how to light the things that you're trying to do. And I don't know if you have professional lights or if you're just lighting with little LEDs and stuff. Like to me, this looks like you lit this with like one of those little six inch LEDs. I don't know what you lit it with, but it's not a big enough source for the size of the thing that you're trying to light. And also you need to light this top down. You need to light it top down in order to light this and this and have the shadow underneath. The fabric that you're using, the fabric needs to be velveteen. This is not velveteen. This just looks like cotton, which is why you're getting all of these little dots that are happening on this because it's not the right background. You can see it right here that it's rendering not right because it's not, again, the right background. This is why we shoot on paper or we shoot on velveteen. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, um, I think you need to watch some videos on lighting because again, we're getting a little bit muddy and you're seeing that we're getting very digital in here. Once I really get in here, looking at the files, I start seeing a lot of, it almost looks painterly, which is, um, data loss and that kind of stuff. So that all comes from a lack of light, Nelson, I think you're trying to do something that I'm not sure if product photography is something that you're trying to do as far as um, a niche. If it is, much like I said to Scott, lean in and really look at the right videos that help you get to that level with your lighting. And also you have to buy the stuff 
so you can light the way that you need to, my friend. I think that it's close, but it's so overall dark with no real idea. Although, yes, it, I mean, essentially your second half of the page is just black space. <laughs> So unfortunately, just black space doesn't qualify. Yes, it's a double page spread, but you could have just shot a single picture and extended the black on the other side. You know what I mean? I need it to be a photo that works its way from one side into the other. That's the idea when we're doing these. I hope that helps you, my friend. That is a photo from Nelson. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. This is an upward battle, my friend. You're trying to push a rock up a hill. All right, let's see our next submitter. Am I getting through these? Hey, yeah, I am getting through these. All right, we're almost there. Shonda, and let's make sure I didn't miss any. Don't tell me that I missed a bunch because I started way up here. So don't tell me I missed a bunch because I didn't. I started right at the beginning. All right, we are down to this shot right here. Shonda, macro, 100 millimeter, Shonda. All right, Shonda, when you're getting in this close, when it comes to these watches, it starts to get tricky. When you start to get this close, I'm gonna be, you don't understand how close I look at your photos, so I want you to be looking at your photos this close as well. This is your double page spread, which is again, very, very blank here. There's no elements here. There's nothing that's adding to this watch. And in fact, in order to compensate for you giving me a double page spread, you 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 were willing to sacrifice the watch. Like in a watch product shot, the watch is the shot. So you need to figure out a way to put this between two pages and have elements on both sides of the watch. This is just the watch. And because of that, it's like, it, it's not hitting. When we start to really look in at the watch and start to really look at this bezel, start to look at the amethyst, although the face is clean, the down here, and all of this stuff is really quite like messy and you can see in the bezel of the watch it's quite messy if you do a little behance search and search watch photography i'll show you what and i, I understand that you're new um i understand that you're new we are all new at, at one point we all started new but what I need you to do is look at Behance and see what watch photography looks like. See what your competition is doing and know that like, this is the level. Show me a photo where they cut the face of the watch in half, ever. That happens never. So if you're doing watch photography, you have to look at what a watch photographer shoots like and look at every single shot if you're going to cut the face it's because you're showing another detail and i want you to look at how clean the chrome is look at the, how clean the face is and i want you to look at your watch and i want you to look at that right so how are you going to get your watch photography from looking like this to looking like this because this is what your photography has to look like if anyone's gonna pay you. Look at all of his images. Look at all of his images, how clean everything is. Like, you can't, you can't go halfway. Even the most basic shot is super clean. So that's like, and again, that's, this is like early work before he was even good. But if you look at like his latest stories, um, like look at this. So again, this is, this is what watch photography looks like. So that's like, that's the bar. And if you're not looking at Behance, then you're just making up stuff and not doing it with, um, 
you're not doing it with an inspiration as far as like what your stuff should look like. Your stuff should look like Behance. And right now, you can see if you're gonna shoot watch, you better grab a real watch to shoot because people who have watch, like even shooting an Apple watch, like you have to shoot a Rolex. You have to shoot something that's super expensive. Like people who are collectors, people who look at watch photography, come on. Like they're looking at watches like this. It's gotta be like such a high-end watch. So this is what your competition is doing. So you also have to do as they do. For me, this one is not there. And you broke big rules like cutting the face when the face is the main focus and also just not building a shot for me. I don't have any props. There's nothing that's, there's no elements around the watch there's it's just there's no there's nothing that gives me context so that's what you need to try for next time i hope that helps all right explora explora rainy foggy day at the docks shot with a 50 millimeter on a nikon explora rainy day Let's look at what this double page spread looks like. Double page drops right there. For me, Explora, like, does it fit as a double page spread? Sure. Is it like a shot that we're writing home about? Is it the best shot that you've ever submitted here? Yes, it fits the double page format, but for me, it's not enough. It's not enough. We're clipping her fingers, which, you know, is a part of the thing. Yes, she's got her phone on, but the hard rain, it, it, it's like, this is more of a snapshot. The exposure on her face is under by like half a stop. Um, it's tricky. I understand that you're pushing through and definitely showing that you can compose a double page spread. The hard thing is, is when you're dealing with winter, we're dealing with shitty weather, it becomes really hard to shoot outside. And if you don't have artificial light, like what are our options? So I appreciate the effort that you did here. Unfortunately, I wish she was under some sort of an underhang. So she wasn't getting directly hit because the wet shoulders are kind of distracting me. And again, we got lots of top space up here, but we're clipping her fingers down here. And if we have the gutter here, right there, and you look at the space between here and the space over here, she's not quite centered. So small things if we're looking at this as a double page spread, but um, good efforts. I know you're trying to knock things out in horrible weather, man. And I know it's rough, but it's gonna be spring before you know it. I promise spring always comes after winter in every case, every case. Scuba Steve, Scuba Steve. This is my submission after taking a week off. Scuba Steve, this is a beautiful photograph. Really beautiful. It definitely works for the double page spread, except for a couple of small things. Number one, where this main support pole drops, is right on my gutter. You can see that that main support pole drops right at the gutter. And then this ladder, which is such a part of the photo, also is claustrophobically close to the gutter. This radical side light, this little rag here is gorgeous. Like I love that. And the fact that we have you know, good context here. I like it. It's just where that center bar is, is the only thing that I'm, that is like, ooh, I wish that that was like, can't we move that like over just a little bit, like over here to make it a little bit more like that? That's my only wish. I mean, again, it's small things. Um, but again, this is a fantastic, fantastic photo. That bar, is your main focus now that now that i've like drilled this into you you will you do see horizontals different this is a very strong photo a very strong photo 
Um, I like it. I marked it as your best photo of the one photo that you submitted. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it, Scuba Steve. I think we have t three more. Three more. Unscratched. Aerial picture. Double page spread. Unscratched. Definitely. Definitely. Works as a double page spread. You just got to straighten it. You just got to straighten it. For me, these li this line right here is crooked. That line's crooked, which therefore then that line is crooked. So it's kind of like the whole photo is just off just a little bit. Um, and th this line also is just a little crooked. It's the slightest amount, but just because of that, the photo is just dropping a little bit that way. It needs to be countered by being leveled probably by like three degrees that way just to straighten this like if i draw a line across the center of this frame oops this is a straight line across the center of the frame and you can see how painfully close all your lines are to being straight but they're not so so that's the only thing that i'm seeing is just is just that as far as the shot um, for me, it's hard because, because it's off balance. I see that before I see, um, I see that before I see this beautiful vibe here and this beautiful gradient and this beautiful tone up here in this little footprint of rocks and this little point where the water starts getting deeper. And in fact, I even miss you guys standing right here. I even missed the two people on the dock and I missed these people on the dock too. I missed all of that because the lines weren't straight. Because the lines not gifted being straight. Member. <laughs> Let's go calligraphy with the gifted baby. Keeping that streak alive with the gifted membership every episode for the last four months. <laughs> Let's go calligraphy. Thank you, my guy. So it's a small thing. It's a small thing. The things that you have working, your distance here very good you know i like this here very good the fact that i mean this is right on the horizon line you definitely could have raised that a little bit higher um but overall it's a banger overall it's a banger i'm happy with it i'm happy with it photos of the week are going to be hard this week honestly it's going to be hard this is a picture from joshua joshua giving me a double page spread let's go joshua Let's get it. So this picture here, Josh, I think is a little bit warm in color balance. Let's just look at this um, as a double page. Your double page drops there. You can see her face distance here versus here. In that distance, we definitely, she's way bias center. The cup is more centered, but I'm more concerned with her face and how that's gonna end up falling into the gutter, considering we have all this space to drop her. And it's not like, it's not like there's, you know, we just have to get you to push her just over just a bit. This sign is a little distracting. I mean, you're shooting a business, you're trying to not be too overbearing. Um, but you're still also trying to get the shot. It's tricky because of the exposure on her face and the exposure on the cup is different. The cup is good. The exposure on her face is like plus two thirds. So tricky, but, um, and also this super light thing, I would have had her stand in front of this because that is fighting the, it's fi even if she's out of focus, this brighter thing is still fighting her face here so i don't know for me i would have her hold the cup higher have her hold the cup like a little bit higher up so it, it pushes up so it's hiding her a little bit and i'd step her over and then i would also you move so you're not so um dead on to her yeah i would have you move over so you're not so dead on to her but again, this is super close, super close, Joshua, super close. Again, like <laughs> you're like one that like I'm watching you so closely. You're so close, so close. Your genius exists 
right beside you. You just need to take one step to the left and you will be inside your genius, my friend. <laughs> okay, this is Cynthia Lilly. Um, this is her first submission. Welcome, Cynthia Lilly. First submission. Premium roast with some green. All right, Cynthia. The first thing I'm thinking is that you need to learn a little bit about lighting. Your lighting is very, very, um, is very lacking. Um, and the understanding of light, it almost looks like this could be a natural light picture where you didn't use light at all. If you look at this as a double page spread, I want you to see the double page spread. This is where the gutter drops. So essentially, if that's the where the gutter drops, the placement of the cup is not really right either because we have space here, but it's it's bumping right up on the gutter and also space here for the cannabis container and all the space here. Like this is too close. These two things, you move this item way over and you also rotate this handle so it's not so forefront. Yes, I know this is a handle and also a pipe, but you rotate this cup that way so this handle isn't so dominant or you have to back up. Also depth of field when you're shooting macro, it's really tricky because you have a very specific focus point here, but you don't have a focus point um, in other areas where you want it to be in focus. When I do, when I shoot cannabis, it's, um, it's super tricky because I shoot, um, um, I shoot uh, a lot of cannabis. Um, Where's my uh, website? It's funny, I don't even know my, I, I don't have a custom uh, a, a domain, but my cannabis site, um, you'll see dried flower. I want you to look at the light when it comes to how I shoot dried flower. So again, I want you to think there's always lighting. There's always lighting. And when you look at no lighting the difference it's just it's such a thing like you can't make your stuff pop without light i'm also using plexiglass look at the reflection of the cannabis underneath the cannabis so it's all like done with like real intent so light is such um it's, it's your first try i got it I, I got it but again what i need you to try is lighting because when it comes to product photography, like this is my, my product photography, like it, it has to be so perfect. Do you know what I mean? Again, this I shot in daylight. This is lit. This is daylight. Even this is lit, lit. So there's things that we can do in order to like, if we're shooting with product, like there's things that we can do but I just like want you to try harder and watch some lighting tutorials. I want you to look at how far your white background, if this is your white background and this is white, how far off white you're like, white only is white if you light it. It's the only way white is white is if you light it. So looking at um, all my instances where I'm using white, you can see how white the white is. It's gotta be really crispy, really crispy, or the image ends up looking, like you can see here, when I don't light it, like this is just natural light, it looks so muddy compared to when I do light it. So I don't do that very often. When you light it, it just looks amazing. So yeah, I hope that helps you and thank you for submitting, I'm glad you found us. Definitely glad you found us. That was Cynthia Lilly. And yeah, Cynthia, I just think also your photos are just too close together. The two um, the two images are just, I mean, not your two photos, your, <laughs> your, um, your items are too close together is what I'm trying to say. Your two items are just too close together. There's, there needs to be space in there and the more you look at references look at references look at photographers that inspire look at my cannabis photography work you can see that on my website yeah that's a good way to do it guys that is the last photo we made it we did it in two hours instead of three all right 
Amazing. I'm going to have an assignment to give you, but not before I give um, some photos of the week. I like to give photos of the week to, you know, show people who are progressing some love and, um, and also really highlight people who are brand new here. So people who've maybe never submitted before. I like to... A photo of the week is one way that I tell people that I'm watching them. And also a way that I tell people that they are progressing. So, my photos of the week. Um, very good. Very good. So far we have two. So far we have two. So far we have three. And also an assignment. You know, I'm finding these assignments are really, they're really helpful. I think that they're really helpful. Um, I have an idea for uh, an assignment, but I really want, how can I put it? I really want um, you guys to nail this one. And it, it, the more I, I've asked to make lifestyle pictures and stuff like that, sometimes you guys miss it. So, um, yeah, I... How many are we at? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're almost there. Ooh, I can't forget that one. I'm only trying, I'm only doing showstoppers, ones that stop me in my tracks. If it didn't stop me in my tracks, no photo of the week. Okay, so I know what your assignment is. I'm pretty much, I pretty much know what your assignment is. What I want you to shoot this week, um, and I haven't finished with the photos of the week yet. But what I want you to shoot this week is an end page. It's the last page of the magazine before the back cover. It's the end page. If you open any magazine on the shelf, you'll see the end page. The end page is like a statement photograph. Imagine it's a vertical, but it's like, imagine you wanted the last picture, someone to remember from you if they look through your portfolio. What would that last picture, something that brings a little bit of humor, something that makes you memorable, what would your end page photo be? By the way, it is a vertical picture. The closest specs that I could give you would be it is a cover. That is the closest specs that I could give you would be a cover. Now, keep in mind, I cannot give photo of the week if you did not follow the specifications. I cannot give photo of the week if... I can't give photo of the week if you didn't follow the specifications. I just can't. But I can give photos of the week if you did. All right, guys, first photo of the week goes to his name is Mike Stimazzi. Let's go, Mike, photo of the week. Congratulations, Mike. You nailed it. You were the first one today that I looked at that I was like, let's go. Mike's got it. All right, our next photo of the week. This one likes to get photo of the week almost every week. If this one's submitting, you guys be worried. Guys, you ready for this? Our next photo of the week goes to Tony with this picture right here. Double page spread picture from Behind the Picture Travel Magazine. Definitely double page spread. Definitely a photo of the week. Our next photo of the week. I don't know who this photographer is. I got to go check to see to make sure I don't miss who it is. Because the I th Oh, wait. Yes, I know the name. I know the name. I'm getting better. I know the name. Okay. This next photographer took a risk. Took a risk. Trying a new niche. But it worked. Let's give it to Joss B. Photo of the week. Photo of the week. Photo of the week. Photo of the week. Our next photographer photo of the week goes to Dreadfully Blessed with this picture right here. Dreadfully, let's go. Dreadfully Blessed. Car photographer extraordinaire, Dreadfully Blessed. Let's go, photo of the week. Congratulations, Dreadfully. Our next photo of the week winner. I'm not sure of this photographer because they are new, but I love new photographers. Let me just see who this name is so I don't F it up. 
this new photographer. I don't know what you want me to call you. Should I call you Thomas? Should I call you Zeal? How about we call you Photo of the Week winner? Let's go. Photo of the Week from Zeal, also known as Thomas. Congratulations, Thomas. Zeal, Photo of the Week. Small little corrections, of course, on your framing, but again, can't take that away from you. It's a fantastic photo. Who? Where have we were we at? We got one more. Our last photo of the week from a new submitter. Somebody who said that photography ruined their life. Guys, our next photo of the week goes to photography ruined my life. Let's go. Congratulations. First submission, first photo of the week absolutely banger guys those are your photos of the week keep submitting and maybe you will win as well and um i want a vertical end page end page look at national geographic look at some magazines see what the last image the end screen the end page could be a picture of you from behind i want you to think of like the last page what would the last page be the last page of your portfolio this one, I'll allow you to shoot a self-portrait if you want to shoot a self-portrait for this. But remember, it's the end page. It's not going to be close up. It's not going to be a portrait. It's going to be an editorial picture. You're making a statement. Your photo has to say something without saying a word. It's not a portrait. It's a statement. Make a statement photo for the end of the last page of Behind the Picture magazine. Guys, that's it. I hope this brought you some value. I can take my laptop and toss it over there. Um, this uh, commercial free show was brought to you by the members of this channel. I have 250 members, baby. Let's go. We made it to 250. Amazing. Thank you for your support. You too, my early members. Appreciate you guys. You guys have been watching me since 2007. <laughs> I appreciate you. Guys, I hope this brought you value. I do photo reviews every Thursday. Start at 6. Tuesdays also starts at 6. Tuesday and Thursday is Ask a Photo Pro, where I help you directly. Thursdays, reviews. Tuesdays, inspiration, motivation, education. Sunday, I do Behind the Picture. Behind the Picture is a bit of a presentation show. This Sunday... <laughs> Guys, guess who I have on Sunday's episode? My marketing coach. My marketing coach. My marketing coach is calling in to answer marketing questions for the 21st century photographer. I'm so excited. Doing a conference call with him tomorrow to talk about what we're going to talk to you guys about. And then, so Sunday. Sunday is going to be a very special episode. It is going to be called Ask a Marketing Pro, perhaps. And if it's something that you guys really like, if you guys really like talking to Gabe and the insights that Gabe gives, oh, if you really like talking to Gabe and the insights that Gabe gives, let's go. Big White Dog upgraded to photo reviews. I appreciate you, Big White Dog. Thank you, my guy. Um, if you appreciate this information that Gabe gives and you like talking to my business coaches, I'll bring in Michael. Michael and I will do a podcast episode. You can listen to Michael. Michael's my business coach. And then Tim, my creative coach, he's the he's the worst guy to get of all. Like he won't do it. He just won't. He'll he'll say no. Like but I'll bug him and bug him and bug him and bug him and maybe I can get Tim on at some point this year. But we are starting with my creative coach on Sunday. You're going to be able to message in chat, ask questions. We're going to have a conversation. He starts businesses. He is a social media genius. Like he's an absolute genius. I'm asking him questions of things that I want to know. So I'm super, super excited. That'll be our next episode. And then of course, we got a video coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, my video is about the creator economy, how you can use the trifecta of words video and photography to propel your career forward. I'm very excited about tomorrow's video. 
trying a bit of a new editing style. The new editing style, by the way, is no editing <laughs> with YouTube videos. So you'll notice in order for me to keep pumping out videos as well as three podcasts per week, there's no B-roll. I don't, I just put on the camera and I just talk to you. So that's what my videos are. And that style of video is really starting to get some traction. So if you haven't watched my last video, which was seven steps for sealing the deal, make sure you watch that one because I haven't got enough traction on that video. Please watch my last video. It's tanking. And um, please watch the video that comes out tomorrow. I'm going to go make a thumbnail. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. If you became a member today, thank you so much. It's because of you I'm able to do commercial-free live streams. If you are watching this after the fact, make sure you leave a comment saying replay gang. And there is 85 people watching right now. I expect to see 85 comments on this video. You understand I'm giving free knowledge here on YouTube. It's free. All you need to do is hit the like button. Hit the comment, make a comment. Even if your comment is nothing except for your favorite emote, just put your favorite emote in the comment. Even just hit the like button, just hit the like button. It helps me so much. Likes and comments propel this channel forward. You see all my regulars begging you guys every stream, please hit the like button, please, please, please. All of you guys now, please leave a comment. If you became a member recently, you're going to see your name and a crown next to you because you are the kings and queens next to your name. If you guys are subscribing, you're seeing the little explosion because my explosion of inspiration caused you to subscribe. But we are trying to make you a member so I can actually look at your photos and help you one-on-one. -on -one. I have a masterclass. Masterclass happens once a month. Details in the description. Make sure you to check my video descriptions. I keep all kinds of goodies there. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching.